Republican presidential primary is heating up. Seven candidates taking the stage in California tonight for the second GOP debate. Experts will be watching closely for any discussion on key tax policy. Joining me right now is Americans for Tax Reform President Grover Norquist. Grover, great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Americans great. for Tax Reform is urging all candidates to sign the Taxpayer Protection Pledge. Tell mm -hmm. us more about that. What is it? And give us your sense of the policy measures that you're looking for or expecting from GOP candidates. Sure. The Taxpayer Protection Pledge is the pledge that all candidates running for president as Republicans have taken going back to 1988. And that's a simple pledge. I will veto and oppose any effort to raise taxes, period. No net tax uh, increase. That's the pledge that Bush, Bush 41, broke and lost the next election. And when he did that, people realized, oh, if you're going to take the pledge, don't break it. And that's when the Republican Party became the party that would never raise your taxes at the national level in Washington, D.C. Uh, almost all the Republicans in the House and Senate have taken the pledge, and presidential candidates have taken it as well. Uh, well there, each of the candidates have taken it in previous jobs that they've had. DeSantis took it as a congressman and as a governor, but not yet running for president. So we'll see whether people make the commitment at this opportunity. The other one is, what tax cuts are people for? Uh, it's very important we take the corporate rate down again. Remember, Trump and the Republicans wanted it down to 15 percent. They only got to 21. I think it's important that we go not to 15, but to 14. Why? Because 15 is what the Europeans want to set as the floor. If we're going to tell the Europeans and the rest of the world, you're not setting our tax rates, we need to make sure they understand we're not going to live with their uh, effort to make everybody have a floor of 15 percent. We, should, we, we want to compete on the lowest taxes and the lowest regulatory burden, not the lowest wages. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should go to 14. Say, you guys can stay up at 15, 20 if you want. We're going to, to 14. The other one is indexing the, the cost basis for capital gains. There's no reason anymore to be taxing inflation. And particularly with Biden's inflation, it's devastating for people who have a capital gain on stocks or houses or land or anything else or business. Uh, if you've got to pay a capital gains on the fake gain that you got from inflation, we need to index that so that inflation is not taxed when you pay capital gains. Well, I mean, it's just so absurd to me that you would buy a stock, it goes up on paper, you made money, but it's all on paper and you're supposed to pay tax about for that. Um, yeah. You know, look, you're talking about the GOP field wanting to lower taxes and, and pledging to veto any increase yeah. in tax. The Biden administration wants to raise taxes and they've got their plan in place. Uh, there's still, however, the White House refusing to answer questions about how much President Biden's American Climate Corp work program will cost taxpayers. Biden created this program through executive action last week. He did so quietly. It will train 20,000 young adults to work in jobs focused on clean energy and environmental justice projects, according to the White House. Democrats and the White House have previously said this program could cost between 10 and 30 billion dollars, Grover. What is the cost and what is that going to mean for our taxes, given the man in the White House is pledging to raise our taxes? Well, Congress hasn't voted this. The, the president wanted Congress, the Democrats in Congress, to vote for this and pass a bill. He, I, we have no idea what the justification is for spending billions of dollars of other people's money on a program that has not been enacted in law. You're saying Congress, um, you're saying Congress really, did not vote on this program. Huh? Yeah, but, but, but no, already no, well, we've got tax increases in the books from this president's Inflation Reduction Act and all of the other legislation yeah. he passed. We're expecting an increase in taxes next year. Well, the, the President Biden has tried to raise taxes at every possible opportunity. Remember, the biggest fib he told was he'd never raised taxes on anyone who earned less than $400,000. Of course, since he got elected, he's raised taxes on energy. He's raised taxes on all sorts of things uh, that directly hit and indirectly hit middle-income people. Yeah. So now he's also going to be auditing people, middle-income people. Uh, the Republicans put a law up, a bill up saying, look, how about a law that says you're going to have $80 billion for new IRS agents, no additional in, uh, efforts to audit uh, middle-income people. Yeah. Democrats 
all voted it down. That's exactly who they're going after. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and how about this newly implemented law that could impact taxpayers who make money reselling concert or sports tickets this year? This law lowers the tax reporting threshold for those using platforms like Ticketmaster, StubHub, requiring the websites to give the IRS information on those who sold more than $600 worth of tickets. The previous threshold was $20,000 in revenue, more than 200 transactions Grover. But this tax provision was included in the American Rescue Plan, the other legislation that this president signed into law. You know, he's got tax increases hidden in all of these packages. You know, I was outraged when I saw that any transaction over $600 you know, some of those uh, companies like Venmo or uh, PayPal, they are being forced to yeah. report all of those transactions. So you're going to get taxed on it if you've got a transaction of $600. Now they're adding into that if you sell or resell sports tickets. They're going after everything. They say they're going after billionaires. How many billionaires do you know uh, sell their children's old clothes and maybe sell $600 worth. It may have cost you several thousand dollars to buy all the children's clothes or a motorcycle that you bought years ago. Uh, Venmo, Facebook, PayPal will send the federal government under the law that Biden passed and the Democrats passed, will send them a note saying, you just earned $1,000. Well, do you still have your receipts? If you don't have your receipts, you're paying taxes on $1,000 of income, even though you may have, you may have bought a motorbike for Five thousand and sold it for a thousand. It's the thousand that the government will have That's right. proof of. And unless you kept your receipts, you're going to be paying taxes on money that you lost. Amazing, Grover. Thank you, Grover Norquist. We'll be watching uh, the candidates' response on all of this tonight.